It's August 6, 1911. The National Association opposed to women's suffrage is organized. William Howard Taft is president. Women don't even have the right to vote yet, and Lucille Ball is born. I'm sure you've heard of the notable classic sitcom, I Love Lucy. But what you might not know is how the beloved Lucy conquered frontiers in the film and television industry for women. If you don't know the I Love Lucy show, it was a light-hearted, classic American sitcom that starred Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, and it aired from 1951 to 1957, a time when America was not so great for women. They had only been granted the right to vote 31 years earlier, and no one was really keen on the idea of hiring them for jobs. Since World War II had just come to an end as well, there was a great urge to normalize and distinguish the different roles of men and women. Women were working in the labor force much more when the men were away at war, so America felt the need to bring it back to home base. Home base meaning the women as housewives and men as worker ants. People now wanted to see and become the all-American family to feel secure as the worries of another war were leaving them feeling as though they were without structure. I Love Lucy actually ended up changing things in the world of film. But before all of that, Lucille's first gig was a cigarette poster girl under the name Diane Belmont, until she booked a real movie contract with Samuel Goldwyn to become a Goldwyn girl. Her next move in the film industry came with better roles, but a drop in pay, and she signed with Columbia Pictures. During this time, however, her only real major role was in The Three Little Pigskins. It took a few years for her to get her acting career off the ground, because the only other roles in the next few years were small but memorable like The Stage Door and The Affairs of Annabelle. It wasn't until her major role in Too Many Girls, where she co-starred with her future husband, that her career had a jump start. On the set of this movie, Lucille met Desi Arnaz, a Cuban-born American actor who played Manuelito on Too Many Girls. The two fell in love quite quickly. So quickly, in fact, that they were married within the year of meeting each other. After this movie, Lucille started to star in the big A-list movies and musicals, where she was in The Big Street, Best Foot Forward, and DuBerry was a lady. Reminder, this was all happening around the early 1940s, where Hollywood was just starting to get back on its feet from the devastating period of World War II. Not even a year after the Seals' big roles, though, there seemed to be trouble in paradise when Desi and Lucille almost get a divorce. Although right before the papers go through, they cohabit, and six years later, create the legendary Desi Lu Production Company. The reconciliation and making of the company become the starting point that leads to the beloved show, I Love Lucy. Now flash to 1950. The Korean War has started, a new generation of actors is emerging, and Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball are traveling the country to show America their vaudeville act. The couple's initial plan for Desi Lu Productions was to travel with their comedic singing and dancing shows, but soon turned into a production company for the TV adaptation of Lucille's radio show, My Favorite Husband. It is not a racket, it's a wonderful romantic holiday and I like it. A comedy about a kooky young couple, with an especially kooky wife, who were two young people who lived together and liked it. If you recognize this description, it's probably because it evolved into America's favorite sitcom, I Love Lucy. The sitcom stars Lucille and Desi as a young married couple, alongside actors Vivian Vance and William Frawley as their beloved neighbors who together get into plenty of kooky and fun situations. The show begins to premiere on CBS on Monday nights and quickly rises to fame. People describe the reason for its quick success to be Lucille's great comedic talents and the chemistry the cast have with each other. The love the characters show on screen really shines through to the audience. But that's not the only reason this show changed the television industry. The big reason was the showcasing of an interracial marriage on American TV. The 1950s weren't just rough to women, but basically anyone who's not a white man. And Desi Arnaz, being a Cuban-born actor in America, would typically not be cast as the husband of a white woman like Lucille Ball. One main reason he was in fact cast was actually because Lucille agreed only to be on the show if her real-life husband could star alongside her. The other absolutely groundbreaking part about the show was the appearance of the first ever pregnant woman on a big television network in the second season in 1952, when Lucy is expecting. This was a big step for women in the industry, and before this, pregnant women on camera had a very negative stigma around it. Now, moving on from the social aspects, another big thing that made Out of Lucy so special was its use of multiple simultaneously filming cameras, which was not a big thing back in the day. They also popularized the use of having a live studio audience, which, as you know, caught on very quickly and began to be used by lots and lots of other shows. Well, the only ones that did a, yeah. uh, did a, uh, a 
in front of an audience. In light of the growing popularity with the show, in 1952, Lucille and Desi also signed an $8 million contract to continue the series for CBS. And in early 1953, little Ricky, a.k.a. Desi Arnaz Jr., is born. From here, things only went up. In 1955, during the fifth season of the show, Lucille Ball becomes the second ever woman to win an Emmy for Best Actress in Regular TV Series. This was huge. She laid the road for the next hundreds of women to win this award. In fact, she even won again not two or three times, but four in the next years coming forward. She and Desi continued the show, winning five Emmys and 25 nominations until 1957, when on May 6th, the 180th and final episode of Isla Lucy airs, ending an era. Six seasons, six years, and 11 million families who tuned in every week. But the end of this groundbreaking show was not nearly the end of its legacy, nor its actors. It will always be known for outranking President Eisenhower's inauguration of viewers in just one episode, for being the first ever television show to do a holiday special in color, and in 1952 when I Love Lucy became the very first sitcom to reach number one in the Nielsen ratings, along with plenty of other frontier-crossing accomplishments. Lucille also made advancements for her future with Desi, continuing Desilu Productions in November, when the very first Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz show aired. It was a continuation following the story of the Ricardos, with just as much comedy and fun storylines than ever. But it only lasted three seasons, with a complete total of 13 episodes, as it ended up being cancelled. The reason for this was because Desi and Lucy actually had a troubled marriage, and it finally came to an end on March 3rd, 1960. Three years later, however, Lucille bought Desi's half of Desilu Productions, taking a huge step in becoming the first ever woman in history to own her own Hollywood production company. This accomplishment would leave an imprint on women in film for all the decades that followed. It inspired influential and powerful women, such as Oprah Winfrey, Tina Fey, and Shonda Rhimes, who all own their production companies just as Lucille now. In fact, Lucille continued to produce more of the most popular TV shows and movies that we all know today, including Star Trek, Mission Impossible, and The Dick Van Dyke Show. Though her work was behind the scenes now, without her we would not have these beloved shows and classic movies. Without her crossing that frontier of a very male-dominated industry, we would not have made the progress that we have today, going down from 100% of producers, writers, and editors being male to 66%, which may still be a lot, but is huge progress. When Lucille Ball died on April 26, 1989, she went down in history as a barrier breaker, influential comedian, talented actress, and an inspiration to every woman who came after her.